Sippers. This is Demetrius. I'm Renee. And I'm Martia. And this is Sip, Sip and, and Unwind. Hey. <laughs> we back. Hey, ladies. We back. We back. Hey. 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 <laughs> we had to pick up a little song for us. <laughs> yeah, we do. We need somebody like with a hard beat, though. It got to be a good beat. It got to be a good beat. Hey, Sippers. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Hello. We got some people that have been participating from our YouTube channel and have transferred over to our podcast. So I'm excited about that. That's exciting. I'm happy <laughs> yeah. about that. Yes. And they broke down every word that was in the last Oh my podcast. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you mean by that? that? They oh broke my down God. every word. <laughs> I mean, I had to hear the whole breakdown and how emotional they got with the true crime. I was like, guys, it's okay. Oh, we got okay. many more coming. <laughs> you sure do. There's a lot of crazies out there. <laughs> and they said, uh, why y'all got to go so hard at the beginning? I said, I don't know why. That's what we're doing. <laughs> it was rough at the beginning. <laughs> You know but how it, they say when they when people switch gears, you just put your seatbelt on and just hold on for okay, the ride. Okay, just, just enjoy the ride. You don't know exactly. that that's coming on the roller coaster. You don't know that. Right. You don't know that <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what are you ladies drinking on today? Yeah, My, I'll go first. I'm okay. drinking some Crown Royal Peach on the rocks. Ooh, y'all don't know nothing ooh. about that peach. Y'all better get some. But ooh. it's only a, um, isn't it seasonal? It's seasonal or it's Child. you know. It's, it's seasonal okay. and they sold out on my side of town. So I wish I was over there with you drinking. Really? Crown Peach. Gosh, them things. I don't know why they do that seasonal stuff where it's gone really quickly and then they don't have okay. it. Like if people like it, give it to us. Keep it right. <laughs> you know, they, they like to <laughs> jack the price up on it instead. Yeah, but I guess, you know, marketing. But yeah, that's what I'm drinking on today. So that's that um has a lot of um a high alcohol content. So mm. I might be okay. smart a little okay. bit, but I'm still here with y'all. I'll still okay. be here with you. Martia, what you sipping on? So I'm drinking, and y'all have heard this plenty of times, it's called Hidden Creek White Blend. But if y'all can remember me telling you about a $1.99 special I caught one day. So $1.99? Yeah, $1.99. I don't remember that. For a whole <laughs> bottle, or is it for one of those mini? For a whole bottle. Wait, $1.99, like $199? $1.99. <laughs> you know, I would never spend $100 on a Why? bottle of wine. My man might, but not me. You're, okay. okay. So, How much did you buy? <laughs> I brought several bottles, and that's okay, why you've heard say, me. I know you didn't get just that, one. <laughs> that's why you've heard me talk about this wine so much, because <laughs> it's got the fourteen point five percent alcohol. Really? Over there, content by volume. Yes. So that that was so, a giveaway. Right. It doesn't give me a headache because I know when people hear the 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 lesser price, they think, oh, that's probably going to make you sick or give you a headache. Mm -hmm. It yeah. goes down really smooth. It tastes good and it does its job for me. So that's what I'm <laughs> sipping on today, ladies. OK, and I'm drinking a little bit of vodka and cranberry juice. Mm. Yeah, okay. a little diet cranberry juice, though. It's diet. Why? Why? Why diet? Diet Just tastes better with girl. it. I you promise the, you, you watch. You're going to be like, this is really good. Did she say, I'm over here asking her, do she have ice in it? But she's talking about she has diet. Right. Cranberry okay. juice. Okay. I was going to be just like, mm. okay. <laughs> well, don't visit my house. Everything will say diet. Really? Okay. I ain't yeah. mad, sis. We got to get these summer bodies. I feel I okay. I'm not doing that in my house, but I feel you, sis. <laughs> <laughs> So what are we, what crime are we doing today? What's going on? What In today's have? podcast, we're going to discuss the mysterious death of Matrice Richardson, a young woman who went missing in Malibu, California. Everybody just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. All right. Because here we go. Okay. Matrice Richardson was born on April 30th, 1985, to Latice Sutton and Michael Richardson in Covina, California. Michael and Latice later divorced when Matrice was young, and Latice ended up remarrying her stepfather, Larry Sutton. Michael Richardson spent time in prison when Matrice was just a child, but when he was released, he turned his life around and started a career in health care. He and Matrice got a little bit closer as she got older. Matrice was noted to be an A, straight A student, and she graduated from Cal State University ooh, ooh. Fullerton with a bachelor's in psychology. Mm, okay, girl. Yes. Matrice lived with her great-grandmother, Mildred Hughes, in Watts, California. 
She worked as a go-go dancer at a local nightclub, interned for a forensic psychologist, and she also competed in beauty pageants and did some modeling. In the events coming up to her disappearance, Matrice was displaying like signs of something being wrong when her mother noticed strange texts and posts that she was making on social media. In Matrice's last post, it stated that she wanted to go to sleep, but she knew hmm. her crazy ideas would lead her somewhere. So her mom became concerned because of all of the weird postings and text messages she was receiving and tried to reach out to Matrice on multiple occasions. On September 16, 2009, Matrice Richardson drove 40 miles from South LA to Malibu and pulled into like this upscale restaurant called Joffrey. It is noted that Matrice had a bizarre interaction with the valet attendant in the parking lot. Matrice cut the engine and waited for the valet. But by the time he was ready to park her car, he found her seated in his vehicle and stumbling around in it. And she said it's subliminal and muttered that she was there to avenge the death of Michael Jackson. What? Yeah, someone right. Oh, okay. He then asked her to leave the car and she complied and he walked her inside the restaurant and let the hostess know that something was weird going on with her and to just be mindful. After being seated at her table, she ordered an Ocean Breeze cocktail and a Kobe steak. While eating, she saw a nice, big, large-sized group of people having fun and asked to sit with them, you know, just to chit-chat and spend time. And she begins holding odd conversations, telling them Mother Nature is my mother, and she was going to Hawaii, and she would contact them as soon as she arrived. They didn't see it as anything odd. They just figured, you know, she was there alone and just needed company and conversation. Time had passed, and everyone that was there at the table with her got up and left and paid their bill. As soon as she was trying to like follow them out, the manager stopped her and said, no, you haven't paid your bill. And she said, no, I'm pretty sure that it's been paid by the people that just left out before me. And he said, no, you need to resolve your bill before you leave this restaurant. She stated to him that she didn't have her wallet and she had no money to pay it. She stated to the manager, she's like, well, I guess I'm busted. What are we going to do? And as the manager spoke to my trees, she kind of like gave like a gaze off expression and was like in la la land and wasn't really focused on the conversation. And she told him she was from Mars. They decided, hey, we need to get the police involved because she has no money to pay her bill. And the people that she was with left her. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, because she was just casually sitting with them and talking. She oh, didn't know okay. them. She entered the restaurant by herself. Okay. So, yeah, there was a call made to the Los Hills Sheriff's Station from the restaurant. The hostess called and said, we have a guest here who is refusing to pay her bill. She told the dispatcher that she sounds really crazy. She may be on drugs or something and gives a complete description of my trees. Hello, Station. Deputy Shalef, I can help you. Hi, I'm calling from Joffrey's restaurant in Malibu. Yeah. Um, we have a guest here who is refusing to pay her bill, and we think she may, she sounds really crazy, she may be on drugs or something. Um, we are wondering if someone can come by and pick her up. Okay, well, what's the address here? It's 27400 Pacific Coast Highway. And is she a white, black, Asian, Hispanic? She's a um, young black girl, probably in her 20s. Okay, what's she wearing? She's wearing a black t-shirt. And I think blue jeans. Is she with anybody else? No, it's just her. Okay, so once she makes the call, the sheriff deputies that were in route arrive at the restaurant, and my trees immediately tells the cops, "I think my wallet is in my car." They go to look and didn't find it, but they do find a small amount of marijuana in the console. On the scene, the officers administrated her a sobriety test. And she passed it. They also determined that she wasn't under any influence of any other substance. They overlooked her odd behavior and placed her belongings in the trunk of her car and had her car impounded. And they brought her in to the sheriff's department to book her. And the charges that they proceeded with was suspicion of not paying for the meal and possession of less than an ounce of marijuana. So my thing was, if she's telling you Hey, my wallet is in the car. Why not 
go look in the car. Right, right. And thoroughly search, but you found marijuana, but you didn't find a wallet. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So before the cops arrived, the restaurant was on the phone with uh, Matrice's grandmother. They were asking her, hey, how can she pay the bill? And the grandmother offered her credit card, but they couldn't do it at that time back in 2009. Oh, they couldn't, okay. you know, I was about to say, no. Yeah, uh, they didn't okay. have the technology available then to do okay. it via phone. So the grandmother had no other way and no other options, you know, to help her because she was far away. Her mm. grandmother was back in Watts and here her daughter, her granddaughter is in Malibu. Okay. But that was the long distance. So fast forward, the grandmother has called Latisse Sutton and tells her what's going on. And so Latisse then calls the jail and asks if her daughter has arrived. She calls and the deputy responds that he heard over the radio before she called that someone is brought in from Joffrey. She asked the deputy on the phone if she could pick her daughter up tonight or leave her if she is being booked tonight and released in the morning. But if she was being released that night, she would be on her way. She just didn't want to drive unless needed because her younger daughter was asleep and the drive was about a two hour distance away. Um, the deputy on the phone assures her that Matrice would not be released until the morning. And she replies to um, deputy, she was like, hey, she feels safe with her being in custody. It's being released that she was worried about. She stated, I would hate to wake up to a morning report that she was found somewhere with her head chopped off. Wait a minute. What? Wait. Yes. The mom was telling the deputy, you know, I feel safe if she stays with you guys. But if y'all are going to release her, please call me. Mm -hmm. Please let me know. So I can come get her because I would hate to get a report and wake up in the morning that she was found somewhere with her head chopped off. The deputy had promised her that they would not release her that night. And time passes and Miss Sutton calls the jail again concerning the booking of her daughter between the time of 1030 p.m. and 11 p.m. The officer who took the call was very nonchalant on the phone when she inquired about her daughter. Miss Sutton then asked the deputy to search for the booking of her daughter, and the woman on the phone stated she was released after 12 a.m. Now, mind you, the first deputy told her, oh, no, we won't release Mm -hmm. her. This one tells her, oh, she was released after 12. So they didn't think that she was like, had any kind of mental issues or anything? Mind you, her car is impounded, and all her belongings was put in the trunk of her Mm -hmm. car. How how is she going to get out? Where's she going to go? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Matrice was released with no belongings and no means of calling for any assistance. So I have a question on that, though. Mm -hmm. Like, didn't they see that she had some sort of mental something? Okay, like, I mean, I mean, it did start off with the manager telling them, hey, she's not right. Like something's not right. right. Y'all need to question that. And if the mother asked, you know, let me know before she's being released, it seems like especially if you think that she's not all the way there, like, you know, something's mm-hmm. not all the way right, that you can make yes. that call. But, yes, okay. exactly right. Mm-hmm. After not receiving any information on her daughter's whereabouts, Latisse calls again at 1.15 in the morning and wants to report her daughter as missing. Mm-hmm. The deputy who received the call advises her to wait 24 hours to mm-hmm. report it. Well, God, I'm to take her Yes, good, good morning. My name is Latisse Bretton. I'm calling to follow up on my daughter who was brought in last night around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Here, let me catch you. Hold on, please. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, hi. My name is Latisse Bretton. I called not too long ago regarding my daughter, my Latisse Richardson. How long before... A missing persons report can be filed. Is it 24 or 48 hours? And so, well, it depends on the circumstances, but uh, um, I, I didn't take your call, so I'm not familiar with it. Did she just not return home after going out? She was arrested last night. This is the first time she's been arrested. Um, she's in an unknown area. Mm-hmm. She's never been in. She's without a vehicle. Nobody can find her. And, and where was this at? Where was she arrested at? Your your facility. Her name is Mytrice Richardson. Okay. Do Do you know if she if she's here now or was she released? They said she was released. Okay. And what time was she released? Um, at, at just shortly after twelve a.m. 
Yeah, normally I we wouldn't I wouldn't recommend doing one uh that soon. Um, right, but it's the time frame. You know, I, I guess probably twenty four hours would be reasonable. I mean if, if there would be some some mitigating factors, you know, where where you know, you would suspect maybe something you know, Well, not yeah. Right, right. She doesn't know the area. She's never been in your area before. Where, where, do you, where does she live? She is unfamiliar with that area. Do you she think she not... possibly could have gotten a bus home? No. And... Um, listen, my child has never ridden a bus. Okay. No. Right. She would not know how to ride a bus. <laughs> I would probably wait till you know, early this morning. And if she doesn't turn up, you can certainly call. I don't suspect anything um bad happened i'm concerned because uh, well, well first of all i thought they were going to keep her overnight because she was highly intoxicated uh-huh. um something so, so, something is obviously going on with her have you tried to the dealer and yes 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 i have he said he tried to get her to save her because she was an adult and he had to let her go i i believe that she is highly depressed um, and she, she, she's in a depressive state. You know, it could be possible that maybe she, I mean, there's a lot of options and I, a lot of possibilities and I don't think all of them would be, um, you know, something dire, but I can certainly understand your fears, you know, being your daughter and all that. Well, um, I think she's depressed. That's what has me more that like. That's worth that, you more than just her. Mm-hmm. Okay. That and the fact that she's in an area where she doesn't know where she's at. Yeah, does so. she take medication at all? No, she didn't. I, I, I believe it's a state that she's in right now because the, 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 the weird activity that's been going on. What's her name? What's her name? Her name is, is Mytrice. Okay. okay. And your name, ma'am? Latisse. Okay. Latisse. Here, here's what I want you to do. Let, yeah. get, why don't you wait a couple hours and and give us some time to kind of I'll go back and talk to the jailer and try and get a timeline of when she was released and you know make sure she's not asleep in our lobby or anything like that and then why don't you give us a call back in a couple hours if she hasn't shown up okay. or made contact with you then maybe we can do something for you okay shortly after she was released. A phone call came into the sheriff's department at 5.30 a.m. And that call was received by one of the sheriffs at the station. And it was by a local resident named Bill Smith. He called about a woman he found on his property and explained how he allows, you know, different people to walk on his property because it's near a walking path that goes through part of his property. But he was telling the, you know, the sheriff deputy, hey, Where she is right now, no one's allowed to come through because my gate is closed. There's no way for her to have access to this. So, you know, I'm just very concerned about who she is and her whereabouts. Okay. Hello, Sheriff. Yeah, hi. Hey, uh, this is uh, uh, Smith at Gold Canyon. We had a prowler walking around through the backyard here, but we don't know what the situation was. I don't know if you have a unit in the area. It might do a little drive-by or something. Okay, where's this at? This is Cold Canyon. I found gold in Monte Nito. Um, and it's in the back of the house, uh, which is right where Woodbluff hits the hits, uh, Cold Canyon. Uh, and we just heard a strange woman walking through the backyard here. This is a fairly large property. She was sitting on the steps right, right in the back of the house here. Uh, this is kind of a circular driveway, but the gates were closed, so we don't know where this woman came from. You said the cross was Woodbluff? Yeah, that's right. Uh, there's there's a, a horse trail, a hiking trail access through here, but we've never had this kind of happen, thing happen before. What she looks like? White, black, and uh, uh, You know, a tall, slim, black woman with Afro hair. How tall? Uh, well, she was sitting down, stretched out on the wooden steps in the back of the house, hard to tell, but she looked like she might have been medium to slightly tall, uh, with a big Afro hair, very skinny. Uh, I think she was wearing maybe jeans or tight pants with a t-shirt. You never, you've never seen her there before? No, never. Nobody ever does that. I mean, the, the people hike up the trail all the time. We, you know, the trail goes through our property, but we leave it open on purpose because it's kind of a nice thing for horses and people. And so she's laying across the, she was laying across the steps or? But she was sitting kind of sprawled out on the, on the wooden steps in the back of the house, right against the back of the house. Yeah. 
Yeah, she's got up in the left. Uh, she's since gone. Yeah, she's been gone about five minutes now. But as we saw it over, we thought maybe a little drive-by wouldn't be a bad idea. And what direction was she, she last seen? Had never saw her. She, well, once she left, she just disappeared. Uh, we, I moved from one window to another. I said to her, I, I hollered down, are you all right? She said, I'm just resting or something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah. she's certainly gone out of the way to get to that close to the house because the, the hiking trail is not that close. It's on the ridge. All right. We'll see you ahead and check the area for Appreciate that very much. Not a problem, sir. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. You heard the deputy state. Okay, yeah, we'll come by and check that. Mm-hmm. Well, it took them two days before they got <gasps> Bill Smith's home wow, to check the area terrible. that he told them, you know, for where he found the tracks and the footprints mm-hmm. in his backyard. So, yeah, they went back there and they investigated. They said, yeah, it looks like somebody was appearing to be running through your, through your yard. Wow. And that's as far as it went. Two days later. Mm. Wow. This mom calls inquiring about her child. They release her. A gentleman calls and say, hey, I spotted this black woman with Afro hair, given a similar description as the girl gave at the restaurant to the deputies. And they acted on it two days later. That just blew my mind. Yeah. That blew my mind. So, so what did they, they find when they went back or when they went there? Just, just footprints. Oh, okay. Just, just footprints. And they said it appeared to be running through the yard. <laughs> how do you determine footprints running through the yard yeah. I, don't, I don't know so while they were conducting their search her mom also conducted her own private search and hired people also to to um, look through the area for where Bill Smith said he saw her last and the area when the mom got there she described the area as very hilly and a bunch of cliffs because where they are it's like in a canyon kind of area the way Malibu is, it has all the hills and the cliffs from the sheriff's department. Like, how did she make it all the way over here on foot? Fast forward to September 20th, the case got transferred over to the LAPD because that's where Matrice is from. She's from, you know, the Watts area in California. So they came through and conduct their own searches and they brought the dogs and everything to try to do the search in the same area where Bill Smith said that she was located they could pick up her scent, but then it dropped cold. Man. And how yeah. long, what's the time frame between? Um, From when she got there, remember she arrived at the restaurant on September yeah. 16th. Okay. That's and LAPD, wait. LAPD picked it up on September 20th. Okay. Got it. To, to do okay, their so own it. search because it was now out of the Lost Hill mm-hmm. Sheriff's Department. And, and they think a dog is going to pick up the trail? Well, yes. they said the dog did pick up her scent, That's but it right. dropped yes. right there on the yeah. property. Hmm. That is so heartbreaking. Like, I remember hearing about this case. And of course, you're mm-hmm. sharing information that I had not heard. Okay. So to learn even more about this case through you talking about it today makes it even more heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just remember hearing about the case briefly and just thought to myself, they handled this situation all so kinds of wrong. Yes. And I just felt so bad for her mother, you know, but this yes. is my first time hearing the, the audio of her mother yes. calling in and everything. I can't yeah, even Her imagine. voice was just quivering like oh my gosh oh, like, is she crying mm. but in the meantime while the LAPD is there you know on Bill Smith's property check and they also go to the impounded car to Matrice's uh impounded car and they go through it and they conclude that she hadn't been sleeping she had been sleep deprived because they could tell from the journals that she was writing in oh. that she wasn't getting any rest she wasn't sleeping at all and they concluded that she could be suffering from a bipolar episode yeah, and something, something was going on. While they were searching through the car, the police also found her ATM card that had a balance of two thousand dollars on it, a checkbook, and her cell phone. So why didn't the yeah, first deputy that came through? They couldn't find it. Yeah, right. But what LAPD. That? That's what I was just thinking. Right. <laughs> LAPD come through and they find it. No mm, problem. Mm, 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 mm. And also noted that it had a two thousand dollar balance on her ATM. Like, could y'all not? Like what? What was the foul play? Like why you couldn't go through with it, but you took gave her a sobriety test, mm-hmm. That's what I tested her for other substances. Yeah, right. That but came you, back negative, and none of them thought that she could it, be having some type of you know psychotic breakdown of some exactly. sort. Exactly. But you find a greenery and charge her for that. Right. But you didn't look for anything else of her belongings. And less than an ounce. Can we make that note? Because okay. you know right. nowadays, right. what almost twelve years later, it that's not even know. a crime in a lot of states anymore. Yeah. So that's just terrible. Exactly. So during the investigation, Latisse Sutton asked 
for any camera footage of her daughter leaving the jail and making phone calls to her grandmother. Yeah, right. the grandmother said no. I was about to say, because I thought the grandmother, okay. Yeah, oh, wow. so she wanted to know mm. because the jailer had um, told her that, oh yeah, we did let her make a phone mm-hmm. call. And the mom was like, okay, well, I need proof. I need video footage of her inside the building, leaving the building, making a phone call to her grandmother. But they didn't have any record of it. So the police was very hesitant on giving any more information and told her there was no footage. The cameras mm. were only yeah, for sure monitoring. Is. Okay, they told her the cameras were only for monitoring. They don't record. Lies. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that's the, when at the a family... police department. Okay. Exactly. Lies. <laughs> so Lies. that's when the family decided, hey, the dad and the mom, we about to hire a lawyer. So in a news uh, press conference, the lawyer stated, their lawyer stated, this was wrong of the department to deny them any information, any camera footage, anything like of her booking, anything of the phone calls made. And that the department was grossly negligent. Okay. So, oh, you about to get sued. But so in January 2010, now mind you, that was back in September. Now we on January 2010. Gosh. But Latisse Sutton found out that a detective on the case was hiding and covering up pages of police reports and video footage surrounding the departure of, of Matrice leaving the police station. And the police later stated they had inside camera footage, but just not outside camera footage. So you told her you didn't have any footage mm-hmm. and they didn't record, but now all of a sudden you do have camera footage for inside. Right, right. Okay, so during this time, eight months has passed and the feds are asked to take over the case. Latisse Sutton speaks to the press and concludes to them that they looked through the history of both families and there was a history of mental depression on both sides. But on Saturday, June 26, 2010, Y'all, time is just passing by. But T. Sutton stated that she was going to file two claims. Well, she filed six, but two of the claims came back for negligence and wrongful death. That's the ones that she really wanted to push through. The police department denied all claims. And that's so sad because I heard you say wrongful death. I didn't even know that you could file that type of complaint Mm -hmm. without a body. Yeah. And, you know, that's unfortunate that they had to come to the conclusion that she had you know, might have passed away. That's yep. sad. Yeah. And that's sad. So during like this endless search that the mom was still doing because she went to file those uh, lawsuit claims because she was still doing her own personal search. They were receiving calls from classmates saying they saw her here and they saw her there. There were also calls coming in from Las Vegas. And also the father, Michael Richardson, had claimed to have seen her and called out her name. And the woman that he was addressing it to turned around, but he didn't know, you know, whether or not that was her because at the distance that he was from her, he couldn't, Couldn't you know, really tell if that Mm -hmm. was her or not, because now she would be looking totally different in a different state as far as her appearance. So he was like, I don't even know if that was my daughter or not, but I just took a chance on that one. On Sunday, August 9th, 2010, around 1 p.m., two Malibu state rangers were hiking down Dark Cannon. That's the same area that she was located as oh. mm-hmm. at the time. They were hiking through as a routine check to check for illegally grown marijuana. They stumbled upon human remains in which they immediately reported to Malibu Lost Hills Sheriff's Department, the same exact police department where they booked her and released her. Oh, my goodness. A report was made to the state coroner's office because that's the protocol. If you find a body, the state coroner's office has to be notified. Well, when the state coroner were notified by the sheriff's department, they told the sheriff's department, please don't send anyone there to that area. Let us come in and conduct our own search. And just to make sure that is the body that, you know, of Matrice Richardson, or it could be of someone else. They didn't want anything tampered with in that area. Mm -hmm. And it was noted that where the body was located, no one could travel by foot, but instead they would have to be airlifted by helicopter and taken down into that area. How'd the police get there, though? Mm. They didn't get, did they get through a helicopter to get uh-huh. there? Or well, the they range- hiking? Remember right, you the, said they were the, hiking. It was the two rangers that found it, so they're used to hiking through that terrain. Yeah, but I'm- yeah, but I'm saying they're saying nobody can get through there unless it's a helicopter. And uh-huh. you have to be air. They hiked. Sort of, oop. <laughs> but okay. So with that. Meaning it can be done. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because that's know? what the rangers were used to doing, though. That was part of their job to, you know, hike down the hills and 
and the cliffs and everything just to check for anything illegal or or anything such as a body being mm-hmm. thrown there. So mm-hmm. not heeding the request of the state coroner's office, the sheriff's department quickly flew in and gathered and bagged some of the body's remains and checked it in for DNA for their own private investigation. Now, they, the coroners told them, don't go nowhere near it. Mm-hmm. Don't touch the body. They decided to go in and do it themselves. When the state coroners arrived to, to be airlifted, they were denied access to the body for 80 minutes by the sheriff's department. They did something where they started covering their, their tracks. Yes, claiming that something. there was no way to transport them to the body because both helicopters were being used for emergencies. So there was no other way for them to get down there. Mm-hmm. Once the coroners were granted access to the site, the bones were misplaced. Some were missing. But luckily, the rangers who spotted the body first they took a picture of the body with their cell phone. Mm-hmm. So they were able to use that, you know, as far as like gathering evidence on how the body lay, how yeah. it was positioned, what was on the body. But come to find out there were no clothes left on her. It was noted that the bra was off, panties were removed, and the skull of the curly Afro hair at the site had no neck. And usually coroners like to use the neck oh to goodness. determine to determine like the cause of death for the person to see if it was any strangulation. On August 12, 2010, according to the dental work examine, it was announced the remains found were that of 24-year-old Maitreese Richardson. They concluded that her body, which was mummified, had been at the location for at least six months or more. Basically, the whole time they were conducting all of the searches for her body. Man. She was right there. They were granted 25, I mean, 27 miles out, outside of the radius of the station. Her body was found at least a one more mile radius outside of that. They noted that this search was the um, <clears throat> second largest search for California. That's crazy, right? The second largest in California. Yeah, but too fine. late, though, which is so sad. It's, it's okay. So in determining the cause of death, an independent review board looked over this case and concluded no wrongdoing. Authorities also refused to list Matrice Richardson's death as a homicide. So Michael Richardson, uh, Matrice's father, pleaded with then Kamala Harris, the general state attorney, to do an FBI investigation into his daughter's case, but it was refused. He was mm. told by the Office of California. It had found no grounds for criminal charges against the sheriff or his deputies. The attorney's general office also found no evidence that the sheriff's office had mishandled the Richardson's family complaint against the department. Michael Richardson stated in a video documented by Chip Croft, lost compassion what happened to Matrice Richardson. He stated that it wasn't until March 2010 that they were asked to come to the station to view footage from that night. A lot of cover-up happened within that department. The video footage from the sheriff's department was clearly edited. Um, In the video, Latisse could tell that her daughter was not well and not acting herself. He said she saw her daughter in the video pulling and tugging at her hair, swinging on the um, door. She said that just wasn't anything that her daughter would have done because she's been in beauty pageants. She modeled. She was a straight A student. Like she couldn't see how those characteristics got overlooked by the department. And she was a beautiful girl. Yes. In the police report, they had sections of it that was whited out. No one could determine what was written down in the full report. The video was botched up that they gave them. They they edited and cut out things. So my thing was, if she's there for that amount of time, how much footage did you need to edit? Exactly. After so much pushback from the family and lawsuits, the police were receiving. They decided to exhume Matrice's body again and take a second look over the remains and decided again that the cause of death was undetermined. That's just, that's just sad. And, and yes. you know, the cause of death might have been undetermined, but, it, you know, let's say, for example, even if she was not, quote unquote, murdered, right? Yeah. The police department, I'm hoping that And you may be getting into this. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I hope that they were held accountable at some point from 2009 to now for this woman's death. Because even if she wasn't murdered, they couldn't find evidence that, you know, there was any foul play involved. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're definitely a thousand percent 
responsible for what ended up happening to her after she walked away from their station. Yes. And I just can't believe that, especially now that I have um, the background that I have at this point, I can't believe that no one in that station at all or anyone that was, you know, at the restaurant that day, mm-hmm. no one thought to themselves, you know, okay, she's not on any drugs because we tested her and she was negative. Then, okay, the other option, in my opinion, would be there's some kind of psychotic break happening here. Let's get yeah. her some mental health, I, you know, because I know here in the state of Georgia, you would have to have someone, um, if they went into the hospital for some type of mental breakdown, they're going to do an automatic hold. I think it was it's for 72 hours or something like that, but it's better safe in that environment yeah. than to and take it, it her, and put her in jail and hold her no longer than two hours like you oh. just released her after mm-hmm. midnight so it was also it was also noted though even though the arresting officers knew of her mental behavior they still released her from jail knowing that what the family claimed to be a severe bipolar disorder without her without any care of her well-being they didn't even care they just released her so in 2011 both parents who sued separately were awarded four hundred and fifty thousand dollars each. That's the that's that's, that's, that's it. Sad. Man, yeah. that's sad. Yes, and in twenty sixteen, the California Attorney General's Office reversed itself and announced it will be opening back up her criminal investigation case. So mm. it took from twenty ten to 2016 although although the case Mm -hmm. is still open and under investigation the police department still conclude there were no wrongdoing they're still sticking to their story as they usually do Mm -hmm. and that concludes our true crime story for my chief richardson so why was she arrested again what was the charge it was just the marijuana not paying her her bill and not paying her bill okay so they Mm -hmm. charged her for that even though Mm -hmm. where did they where Never mind. I'm trying to get too far up into it because I'm thinking, where did they, because they got her at the restaurant, correct? Yep. So she didn't leave the restaurant. So she, you know, like, nope, she to didn't pay leave. the bill yet. It's not like she walked out and walked up the street and then they found her there, right? She was at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And by her not yeah, being able to pay it, they decided to call the sheriff's department and was like, no, nah, she can't pay this. Mm-hmm. We got to do something. Because mm-hmm. even though she that. didn't leave, they mm-hmm. made that call based on her acting erratic, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yep. By her behavior, they was like, "No, nah, let's call, let's call." So they end up calling him. But the arresting officers, though, like you didn't notice. I mean, you gotta notice when somebody, even if, even if they're it, tipsy, it, you yeah. can notice when somebody is tipsy. Tipsy like, versus having a mental break. See, I, I don't want to get too political yeah. on this, but I'm just thinking, you know, like the whole defund the police, and this is a reason why perfectly Mm. right now not saying that we don't need to have police here because of course we need to have police you know Mm -hmm. but this case could have been maybe instead of calling the police because they said that she's not acting right you call like somebody else who Mm -hmm. can deal with that because the police they're they can be like an 18 year old fresh out of high school and you know able to be a police but you can't judge somebody's mental state to say that you know okay they're fine to be out in the street and you know that's not that shouldn't even be your job because you don't have the qualifications to judge that, you know? Because well, on the call that the hostess made, she was like, uh, she's acting weird. Right, right. Like somebody else should have been there yeah. to, you know, make that call. Mm-hmm. But that was, yeah. that was a lot of negligence. Because it would have went a whole on. different way. And this, mm-hmm. this could have been, you know. And I would say, too, to piggyback off what you're saying, Renee, with it, because I wouldn't want to go on anyone's call to assess a situation if the person is being violent. And she was not being violent from what mm-hmm. I here right no. and like you say renee especially after they got a negative dui or dwi mm-hmm. um test it came yeah, the back sobriety negative. Test came back that's what it was yeah. yeah the sobriety test came back negative so like mm-hmm. you say at that point because i don't take away the police because i talk trash about them exactly. but i still want to be able to call <laughs> right. you know? say, we're but not but at that point in time like you say if there was this other department like we're gonna put her in the back seat for a second yeah. and call this other department so they can come over and assess the situation exactly. She's somebody who's trained in that mm-hmm. exactly know. i agree with you because she wasn't being violent she did test negative for substance use and so to me I think even as an average citizen, because we use the word crazy all the time. It's like, okay, they either mm-hmm. on drugs or they got some kind of mental issue. Usually yeah. in my mind, that's how things work for me when I see stuff anyway from years ago. So that just surprised me that they treated her that way. Well, 
I say surprised, but yeah. not really, you know, but it's just, I, I just feel for her parents, her mom and the dad, mom. no matter how much money yes. they gave them, that, that doesn't yes. bring their daughter back and they still don't have closure. Like you mentioned earlier, Demetrius. Yes. Yeah. But the whole thing was how did the LAPD come in and find all of her belongings mm-hmm. and a checkbook, an ATM card, her wallet, and you find all of that. Mm-hmm. How did you miss that? It's three right. of you, two of you. I don't care if it was one of you. How did you miss all of her belongings, her wallet, everything, but you find the marijuana? Right, right. And you can book her for not paying her tab. Okay, sippers. We have a, a little segment that we're adding in on this podcast, and it's called Random Wind Down. With the random wind down, we can just add in like inserts of just random things that we feel that are of our interest. So you ready, ladies? All right. So what do yes, we have I'm to ready, do? girl. Okay. Um, there was an article I found in researching from people.com. And in that article, it was about a juror from the Cassie. Uh, oh, am I saying Cassie or Casey Anthony? Oh, Casey it's Anthony. Cass- yeah. Casey Anthony. So yeah. in her case, that juror spoke out because it was the 10 year anniversary. And he stated how he really hated that the outcome came out the way that it mm-hmm. did. He really wanted to convict her. He said that's been, yeah, he said that's been playing on his mind for the last 10 years. Did he go into about, detail? Yes, he oh, said okay. he stated that he wakes up every morning regretting that he looked at all those photos of that poor baby, deceased body. Mm-hmm. I think it was in a creek, but he said the way that she was positioned, her lifeless body, he said it just plays on his mind at least once a day every day and he said if he could do things all over again he would go back to the jurors and tell them we gave felon an agreement of she did nothing we presumed her innocent when she should have been convicted but why did he say you know like did he say that because he believes that she was guilty and they overlooked evidence he said that the prosecutors didn't really give them much evidence to like fight against oh man yeah the Can't not believe it's been 10 murder. years since that yeah like, that's it's crazy been a minute. gosh so he said and also when he said he sees headlines of her out partying mm-hmm. and, and doing you know things progressing with her life knowing that her child is no longer here he said that frustrates him even more like to the point of, She's like trying. why did we change her verdict into an innocent verdict mm-hmm. instead of a guilty well well, never mind. I'm about to say, well, yeah. you, you should have changed it then. You okay. Stuck he said up. he wish he could have convicted her of at least one of the lesser charges, like aggravated manslaughter or child abuse. Then he should have. Oh. You should feel bad yeah. then. Yeah. You should feel bad. Yeah. You know? So I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, really? Now you want to change your. Yeah. Like, get out of here. Now you want to change the verdict because mm-hmm. it's really haunting you? Because it's haunting you because you know you did the wrong thing. Exactly. Exactly. Well, in my opinion, I really believe well, that, that she was guilty. That's just my opinion. That's what I think, too. I mean, the facts was the facts. It mm-hmm. was there. She was the last one to see her. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just too much. Was so much. Of, yeah. And it was too much of the dad. Like, he was covering up for her. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, with Casey Anthony's father, it looked like... He was covering up the mom. Like the mom was, was covering. covering. Yeah. So it just like it was too suspicious. Like, mm-hmm. hey, y'all need to go further in depth and question this woman more in detail. Like, what did you do? How do you feel about your daughter being dead? Like, it should have been more questions. And mm-hmm. it seemed like that case was just rushed through. And then the verdict came back not guilty. I was like, not that was crazy. Not guilty. Yeah. Not guilty on nothing. Yeah. And then the next week, you saw her out at the club. Boom. Like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is she really at the club? So I kind of feel him on that a little bit of feeling guilty for not at least charging her with manslaughter or child abuse. But how was child abuse even, how would that even be a a charge? She's dead. How is that child yeah. abuse? I didn't, I didn't understand that. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah I, I thought I would bring that up in here since we do a uh, true crime. Mm-hmm. And that was a true crime for Casey Anthony. Yeah, she was, she, yeah. I, I don't want to be, but, but <laughs> I don't even want to say it. Never mind. We're just going to yeah. leave her at that because yes. she's so trash in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but, exactly. And she yeah. makes money from some of the things that have mm-hmm. come after her child's it's death. Disgusting. You know, it is. It's just. Oh, and I yeah. just, and I just, read, ironically, I just read a headline stating that she got into a fight 
at a club. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it was like what two weeks ago. That week was ago, recently. Something like what? that. No. Are you so serious? You are still clubbing. It's ten years since mm-hmm. you're done, and you still you still clubbing. You still doing things that are childlike. Why are you in the club fighting? Yeah, wow, she gets rewarded crazy. for bad behavior. I guess she gets all over stuff. a man. I heard it was so, well as I was reading. It was stated it was over a man, but really, mm-hmm. you're in the club fighting. So I kind of when I read that article about the juror, and then I read then I read that she was at the bar or the club fighting. I couldn't mm-hmm. believe it. I was like, okay. oh man, now he's really gonna feel bad because now he's seeing her at the club. <laughs> That's probably why he said something. Was that recent that he just came out and said that? Um. Or it was, was this it year. Ago? It was this year. Okay. It was this year. I should have looked at the date. I want to say it was in the last three months that the article came out. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I just thought I would, because, you know, it make you wonder, do jurors even feel any kind of way after they convict a felon? Or, mm-hmm. Like, do you, and presume them innocent, like, do you not feel some type of way? Yeah, no. exactly. And I also feel that's like kind of peer pressure in a way too that jury yeah. thing you know how you can have somebody who thinks one way but you have pressure on everybody yeah. saying come and on he, you, gotta, the, you know he also stated that they all kept in touch but he kind of removed himself from it he said because you kind of like get a family bond because you want to continue to talk about it and continue mm-hmm. to express your emotions but my thing was did y'all not have the same emotion then right right when you were doing the verdict like did mm-hmm. you just not concluded, but he said the prosecutors didn't give him enough information to hmm. use against her, but I don't know. That's sad, though. I, I kind of, that, that case, though, I remember it, but I don't remember the details. I just remember being okay. upset about it. Like, yeah. this lady never served time, no real time mm-hmm. for, mm-hmm. you know. Like, and I can't I remember I like- the specific details either. I just remember one part where I remember her mother got into Casey's car, and Casey was, I mean, her mother was saying, Casey, this car smells like death. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like what's wrong? What's this smell in the yep. car? Yeah. And it seemed that the car was, you know, the dogs had a smell of uh, her, cadaver dogs. Her or face, the whole death trial. Yeah. yeah. And when she sat in the trial, it was like she had no, yeah. no emotion. Like, wouldn't you be crying if mm-hmm. your child is deceased or found dead or missing? Mm-mm. Yeah. No emotion. Okay, Sippers, thank you for joining us today. And we hope that this podcast, you know, sheds some kind of light on missing person and those close to you. Please keep them tight. Know their whereabouts. Exactly. Just just keep your loved ones close. And if you have an intuition of someone being missing, please report it. I feel you. All right. Well, thanks, Sippers. I guess we will talk to you on the next episode. Yes. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Sippers.